you picked you, you picked a couple different ones there. Yeah. I don't know if they're good though. Yeah, hey, I wouldn't pass up either one of them. Yeah, same. Uh, trust me, I haven't for a while. <laughs> yeah, me neither, unfortunately. <laughs> How are we doing today? Good. 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 How are you? Good. Questions. I guess I'll start right. with. Uh, He's done a good job. I mean, he's working hard at it. He's really, um, I think, as far as the professionalism and trying to learn defense and learn football and stuff like that, I think he's, you guys don't necessarily see that, but I can speak to that, and I think he's really done a great job there. I think he's really trying to learn all the aspects of football, just not corner play, how teams attack you, how they do things. I think he's becoming a better and better pro every day because I think he studies that stuff. and. It's important to him. Sometimes when you're a rookie, it's just kind of like get me lined up and try to survive and do the right thing. And but I think now he's trying to take it to a different level. I, I've been very pleased with him. He was talking the other day about how he trusts the scheme and the defense. And he was like, when there is that trust, like going into the game and feeling good about the game plan itself, it kind of allows me to play more free. Have you seen that from him? Or he yeah, I've already seen that. I think from the whole defense. I just think. You know, I just don't think everybody truly, truly um, knew coming in how deep and complex our defense kind of is. Um, it's a lot more than what people think. Um, but if you keep doing it, it, it's just like anything. If you take four hard classes in college, it's going to be a tough semester. If you take one hard class and three easy ones, you just concentrate on the one. It's a lot. It's a lot. And I knew it was a lot. And, but the only way you're eventually going to get to where you want to get is to keep doing it and keep feeding it and keep putting it in and keep doing it. And, and, and all of a sudden, stuff, things start making sense a little bit more you know, than maybe they did. First of all, it was memorization. Where do, where do I line up and what do I do? Now it's where do I line up, what do I do, and why is that important that I do it that way? How does it fit in the whole scheme of things? And I think the whole defense as a whole has gotten better and better each week. We, got, we still got a long way to go. But, I mean, we have a huge playbook. And I always relate it a little bit in some ways to New England's offense. I mean, their playbook would fill up this room. But it's been the same system for how long? So it just, you know, you get a new guy comes in, but it's still the same system. There for a long time, it wasn't anything new because Tom was running it. You know, it's a, you know the guy, a new guy's now got to learn it, but it's, it is the system, and it takes a while to do it. And the more you do it, the more comfortable guys, I think, become overall. Not only AG, I just think everybody, 4A, all of them. When, when you were in New England, that, that just take up a whole floor? It probably <laughs> <laughs> it, it took a lot, I'll tell you that. But the thing that if you always look back at those years, you know, like the six years I was there, I had pretty much the same guys every year. We'd lose one or two guys. And when I was at Baltimore, we'd lose one or two guys. Offense, the main thing is they kept the same guy for 15 years or whatever the heck it was. I mean, you move some new guys in, but the whole crux, there was continuity, the same coaching staff, the same everything. It just, it takes time to do that stuff. And, and I know everybody wants immediate gratification, don't we all? But, you know, sometimes you, you, know, you go through some growing pains or whatever, but you got to stay the course. You've been around a lot of really common quarterbacks throughout your career. Is there a sense of, that you can pick out a moment where, you're, where that guy gets your defense? And do you remember that moment with AJ? Uh, I don't know if there's just a moment. I can just I can feel him in the meetings. I can tell by body language. A lot of times you can when you stand in front of a defense for so long, you can tell by body language whether somebody's getting it or not getting it. You know, you can tell if they're a little confused, if they're really into it, if they really truly understand. Because most of them are not going to ask questions. You know, it's just like most people in general, if you say, you know, anybody got any questions, and no, you know. But they probably do, but they don't want to ask them. 
but then when guys start freeing up in front of the group and asking questions, you know, they're now starting to kind of get it, and AJ now has kind of gotten it. And, uh, you know, I have what I call a signal callers meeting now every Wednesday morning. I didn't start it out. I've done it every place I've ever been, but I waited here for a little while, and it's every Wednesday before I ever meet with the defense. I meet with about six or five or six guys on defense to kind of tell them and show them a game plan. He's one of them. And so I can kind of tell now he's a little bit more into it. You know, it's like, okay, well, I got a little bit of a leadership role here, even though I'm not a, I'm a young guy. He's kind of expecting this me, and I can tell he's taken to that. Is that, is that. That meeting, is that the same meeting that you generally have with guys to kind of get their input on the game plan? Is it that, is that right, the it's the same one that I used to have. Like I told you at Baltimore, I had Ray Lewis, Suggs, yeah. Lodi Nada, and Ed Reed. You know, the Hall of Fame dag on meeting. So, it, but it's that same meeting, and what it does is you present them the game plan, you watch them as you present it to them. Here's what I want to do, here's what I'm thinking, and you can kind of get the feedback from them. You know, if they're kind of like, you know, give me one of those, like, okay, what? And then they have their chance, and it isn't in a big setting where they can tell you kind of, okay, well, Coach, I was, you know, what do you think about this? And listen to them, and listen to them. And so, um, you know, and, and don't just ignore them. Listen to what they have to say. And, then, yeah, you, you may do it or you may not do it. But if you don't do it, then give them the reason why you don't want to do it. Don't just say, no, nah, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. It's not, not like when you're growing up and your parents say, because I told you so, to do it that way. It just, you know, let them have input. It's their team. They're out there playing. start to get more engaged? Probably, you know, maybe a couple of weeks ago or so, just starting to kind of, you know, still, it still was a new system. It's still things come up every week. It did in the game on Sunday. Something comes up. You can't practice everything against everything. And something will come up against a certain defense, a certain play, and that's how they'll learn it. And, you know, and then 20 games from now, that it won't it won't be as big a problem because they've seen it before. But when it hits the first time, you can't go out. You get so many reps in a week, you can't rep every single thing. And then give the offense credit; they come up with new stuff that you've never seen. So, but then the next time you, they see that, okay, this is how that works. So, um, it's just a, I can just see that he's getting more confident. What do you think has led to Grady Jarrett? So why do I see him being so successful? No, no. What do you think has led to him being so successful this season? Oh, he studies. He studies. He, he's a guy that – I knew that about Grady before I ever got here because I had, he is really good friends with Ray Lewis. And Ray and I had talked, and he said, you're going to love that guy, and he wasn't wrong. And so it just he's, – he's a football player, a guy who loves football, loves being here, loves playing. Um, I think everybody has different motivational factors for wanting to sometimes play. I think his is for the love of the game, and I love that about him. And you just and the other thing about it is, is okay, Grady is a guy that is a big name around here, right? I mean, a guy's he's a big name in the NFL. But yet, when you talk to him and when you coach him, he takes it just like any rookie or anybody else. Hey, Grady, I'm thinking about this. Yeah. I mean, he's one of those guys in that meeting, too, obviously. And, and he, but that's what's so great about those really great players is they don't sit back like they got all the answers. And they, they listen, and anything that's going to make them better, they're going to do it to try to make themselves better. And that's what I love about the guy. Coachable is a great person, too, by the way. Just a great human being. Who do I look at as a leader? Oh, sorry. So what is Grady like as a leader on that defense in, the, in meetings? He's, very, he's a good leader. We got kind of a, a group a little bit that's not – there's so many different personalities, but they all blend pretty good. I, I don't, there's not a lot of bunch of guys out there that are – and Grady's not one of them that, that's necessarily beat his chest and rah-rah and look at me and all this kind of stuff. He's a leader by – really – I know that it's, it's always cliche. I always hate when they say, I lead by example. But his example isn't just, it's the way he practices, the way he conducts himself, the way he handles things professionally. Those are all things the young guys need to see and need to hear. But we got a bunch of guys like that. I don't know that we have like a, 
one guy that's just this overwhelming personality. They all are different, but they all have good leadership qualities. But he, he's an excellent leader. Who else is in your signal calling meeting here on this? Well, God, I, I really don't want to leave any, anybody out, but it's, I, I take somebody from every, every position. And then sometimes I take two. You know, so if I think they're really in a position, because if I say it, then I don't want somebody's feelings to be hurt. Well, you know, I'm not in that meeting. I didn't get my name mentioned or whatever, because it's not about it's not about that. It's about, you know, the, the, the other problem, a little bit of the problem is, too, at the same time I'm meeting with them, special teams meetings going on. So special teams has priority over my meeting. So there could be some guys that I would normally have had in that meeting that may be in the special teams meeting because Marquise has to have them. So that's why I don't really want to leave somebody out. And uh, but every position is represented. In terms of installation, have they have they seen everything you do? And oh, now right. You're, right. <laughs> so much, what percentage of what you do, what you have in the file cabinet in the office, have they seen at least once? Thirty percent. So. What and I've cut that back to about twenty. Really, I cut back. I told you I cut back after the Philly game. I cut back. And I piecemealed a little bit of the stuff back in. We had a couple of new wrinkles last week that we got a couple of hits on. Unfortunately, one of them was a penalty. Um, but it was a good, <laughs> it was a good pressure. Because unfortunately, we got the penalty. But um, we're starting to kind of bring some of those things back a little bit. But there's, I mean, I got a full playbook from New England, a full playbook from Baltimore, and one from Tennessee. And they all... Some of them overlap, but not all of them. So it's it's we got a long way to go. When do you get do you get there at the end of you know year and a half season and a half in? When, when do you expect? I don't know. It, that, you know, I can't really. I don't know if I can really give you that answer. It's just what you do is you each week you kind of look at something and say, okay, is this going to now fit with something they already know that maybe won't be too hard for them, like what we did last week on, like I say, on a couple of those pressures that actually hit. They were pressures I'd run a long time ago, but we kind of run something similar, so we put them in, and they, they really worked them really, boy, they did them really well. The whole group did, did them really well. So it's stuff like that. I just keep kind of, you know, or I'll try them during the week, and then when we go back and watch the film after practice, going, no, this is, this is not, we're not ready for this. So, I mean, that's why you practice and just throw it out, because if you don't really feel like it, you're comfortable enough to call it, you, no sense putting it on the list. Just put it on the back burner. We'll get it another time. So it just kind of, there's not really a timetable on it. I mean, it, by the end of the year, who knows? We could be really rolling in this stuff. But I also don't want to, we got to keep getting better. And if I keep adding on and we're not getting better, then that's not the answer either. What is it about the defense? Steve Meads played more snaps this year, I think, already than pretty much has any point. Who has? Means. What is it that Stephen Meads gives you? Put him in position to play as much as he does. He, he doesn't, he knows what to do. He is dependable and trustworthy. Stephen Means will play 100 mile an hour and give you everything he's got on every play, and he'll be in the right spot and do the right things. He, he may get blocked. What defensive lineman an end has? Okay, whatever. We, we, nobody's played 100% perfect in a game. But the thing that I love about Steven is you ask him to do something, he's going to do it like you ask him to do it, like you coached him to do it. He is a great personality on this team. He's a great, to me, a guy that's worked from the ground up to get what he, he nothing's been handed to him. I just think that I love guys that you can just trust. And he's one of them. This might, be, this might be a weird question, but Cordell's CP was talking about this yesterday. He'd love to get an interception. Could you ever see him on defense? Could you ever see using him on defense? I could probably see him doing anything. <laughs> <laughs> is that a good athlete he is? Uh, well, he actually does have a he does have a package where he actually is a free safety on our defense. So that, you just never you, you've just never seen it, and I hope you <laughs> and I hope you don't. <laughs> you face the, the Cowboys running back tandem and Elliott and Pollard. What what um, stands out to you when you watch them two running backs? I would say this: if you're if you're playing on defense, every player is at the point of attack. You know, a lot of times they say off tackle. You know, you got to stop the off tackle play, or you got to stop the outside play and set the edge. 
when they get hand of the ball, they every player on that defense is at the point of attack. I mean, I've seen the ball play be supposed to be running the A gap, and and 21s jumped that thing clear the way outside and got a big gain. That's the biggest thing about those guys. Those two guys, they're they're they can run downhill. They got low center of gravity. The other thing is, is that when you tackle them, you better bring everybody to the party because you know they'll spin. He'll, I've seen him, you know, one hand on the ground and come up. Everybody thinks he's down. He's not down. Both those guys. I think they're really complementary to each other. And I just think that everybody is at the point of attack when they get the ball. Are you a believer in the blueprint? For the Broncos did this, and it worked. So we should just do this. Well, I, I, we all steal stuff. You know, this, that's this league. This offense steals it. Like, if we... If we're not doing well against screens, they're going to, we're going to see screens until we fix it, all right? And if you aren't doing well against the run, you're going to see run until you fix it. I mean, that's, that's just the nature of the, of the beast. And defense kind of the same way. I mean, if, if, if they're pressure, if you can pressure and you're seeing a lot of the guys really having a tough time with it, you do it as long as it fits your personnel. You can't just, you know, you know, you can line up, some teams can line up four guys and rush like heck and got great pass rushers and got four of them. And so you watch that game and boy, that's the, that's the secret right there. Four man rushing. Well, not if you don't have four guys that can rush. So it's just, it, you look at it to see how they can handle it. How can we do something similar to something that's hurting that team? And, but does it fit what we can do with our personnel? That's all. I mean, it's just like man coverage. I mean, if you go out there and somebody blankets these guys in man coverage one week, that's great. But if you don't have the same kind of DBs that team had to play man coverage, then that's that's really not going to work. So, but you do you do look at it, Josh. We have time for one more. Anybody? Awesome. Okay, appreciate it, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.